How can someone who's been viewed as a harmless Asian guy their entire life change now? Let's talk about it. This is a classic internet debate. Oh, we gotta talk about this viral post on Reddit. It says, struggling with coming across as the harmless, non-threatening guy. This guy basically introduces himself. He's a 30-year-old Chinese American. He has had success in life career and even he feels his looks and physique but he still struggles with being seen as harmless non-threatening and goofy which is the biggest single reason he reveals that he has been prevented from dating the higher quality women that he feels like he should be getting all right yeah and then he goes through saying like he does date women but then uh, he apparently only attracts very toxic controlling women perhaps because he gives in to them and he's just like ah, i just need a stronger personality i don't want to be so agreeable i don't want to be so non-threatening because maybe women don't find that sexy and masculine so i guess we're going to talk about it in this video and we'll try to break it down you know yep so make sure you like subscribe and turn on your notifications but Real quick, we got a word from our sponsor, Smala Sauce. Get it at smalasauce.com right now. Uh, it goes great on everything. A lot of people like it. Check out the Instagram at Smala Sauce to see all the cool content that we've been creating for it. Yo, I mean, you know, I'm going to be honest. I, I'm not going to lie and say I haven't gone through some percentage of this myself. Mm -hmm. You know, I think anybody who's born into a highly academic Chinese American family, Asian American family, it seems to be honest more prevalent this this type of situation seems to be more prevalent in the chinese world yeah i mean and let's talk about why being seen as a harmless asian guy is so bad right obviously do you want to be a scary asian guy well there <laughs> there's actually some pros and cons to everything right well, well maybe you would like the potential to be viewed as a threat right, right. not right. that you are but you'd like that like in your back pocket. No, no, let's talk about it. For a, a lot of Asian guys who maybe he's not super tall and maybe he doesn't have like a super chiseled face and a lot of facial oh, hair. Oh, he does go on to say that he was growing up and he had the smallest physical frame out of everybody, which made yeah. him feel like he needed to be extra role agreeable to fit in. Right, right. And, but being a harmless smaller Asian dude in America, maybe with no uh, facial hair it, or, or strong muscles, it might make you feel like that everybody's just seeing you as like a friend or they want to take advantage of you. Even low key, your friends like subconsciously might do that because you're such an agreeable person and you're not like, your stature isn't tall, so then you're short, but then your personality isn't very big either. Right, and I feel like he's not really saying that guys are taking advantage of him, but maybe he feels that women are taking advantage of right. him. Right. Possibly by saying uh, the really controlling women are the types that only gravitate towards him for long-term relationships. No, I mean, this is common. I would say, like, sometimes I feel like, maybe more so in years past, but I feel like I would get viewed as, like, a harmless Asian guy. You know, and it's not that I am a dangerous Asian guy and, like, you don't want to be viewed solely as that either. But you just feel like you are going to get slightly disrespected in certain contexts if you seem or act or appear too harmless right. and too non-threatening. It's almost like you're not saying you're a pit bull. You could be, like, a golden retriever or a terrier, but you're getting treated like a Pomeranian. Yeah, no, but the thing, you see a Pomeranian or a little dog, you're like, oh, that's um, so cute, and you just rub it, and you're just like, ah, you just like, kill a little dog. Can't do nothing, man. No, you're no, not no. I mean, I'm not going to lie and say that I don't relate to this original poster at all, like, 0%, because I remember in the past, like, even, like, three years, this one chick that I dated for a while who, or not a while, but, like, she was, like, quote, unquote, like, a baddie, and every time we would go out, it's like constant compliments from men and women and whatever mm -hmm. like that and just free stuff comp. It was just like that level of situation. But I remember she was really controlling mm -hmm. and, and ultimately just too much to deal with it. Like the juice wasn't worth the squeeze. So I've even been through that situation where it's like, where I was like, yeah, I finally got a model. And then it's like, man, she's trying to control my life and it's not worth it. Oh, all right, guys. So we're going to get it. We don't have all the end all be all answers for everybody i don't personally know this guy he definitely needs some close bro homies to like talk this over with that actually care about his life but we'll do what we can yeah do you think it's true that being this goofy agreeable nice harmless guy that girls want to be friends with that's not the person I'm, I'm assuming he's talking let's just be shallow here for a second this guy's talking about like baddies he that's not the personality archetypically the baddies want. No, no. I mean, and uh, I mean, listen, you have to be the male version 
of the female that you're trying to attract in a way. You know what I mean? Like you have to know what you offer her. And so that's how I would look at it. And yeah, I mean, I don't know what he means by high quality of women. If he's just referring to better looking women, which is th that's somewhat of a shallow way to look at it. Although I understand what he's saying. But it's a very actually, guy way of looking at it. It's a very guy it. way of thinking and about it. a little bit like, young too. It's a little bit younger. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or maybe he just feels like that he should have the direction and he should be steering the ship in a relationship of like, oh, babe, you want to go here? Like, I got the plan here. You know what I mean? Like that, where we could go do this and that. But is he, is he saying that he's coming across as like, I, I don't know. I don't know what I want to eat. What do you want to eat? And he was I, like basically saying like he doesn't like that he is that way in his relationships and he feels like it's resulting in his, I guess, lower overall rank in the marketplace. Yeah, I mean... Honestly, uh, without knowing this guy... Because there's no photos, right? Yeah, what I would say is, like, the number one thing I think a lot of guys overlook is, like, they get muscles, they hit the gym, they get the new haircut, they buy some clothes, they kind of, like, know how to make themselves look better, but that doesn't necessarily change their personality. I think one thing that a lot of guys, and what I've heard from women that I've talked to or gone out with, is that a lot of guys are not very straightforward, now, you don't have to be the smartest guy to be straightforward, but you kind of do have to know your direction and have a vision for yourself and know yourself and what you do and don't like. And it sounds like this guy is more just always going along with the flow of things versus dictating the flow, which is a more alpha masculine thing to do. Yeah, I think it is ultimately like something that uh, more guys, if they probably wanted to take control of their life, they'd have to craft an image for themselves, stick to their principles, have a spine, have a backbone, and really like still make some other adjustments. But really it's almost like if you come to me, then it's gonna be a good fit, but I'm sticking to my principles. I'm not shifting my backbone and my spine just a, on a whim to try right. to get more opportunities. Exactly, exactly. So I guess, David, real quick, before we get in the comment section, because there's a lot of other Asian bros weighing in on this, but what are some things that you would just recommend off the top of your head? Well, first off, first off, let's be honest, Andrew, uh, as is classic with Reddit here, do you think this post means that much without photos? Man. Without photos, without understanding the exact city? We don't know you, bro. This is so weird to give advice from a written text it's so vague right it's so va i have no idea where you are what you look like i'm assuming this is a nerdy chinese guy who's a tech consultant though who who went to a top 10 grad school that's uh, the information fit maybe he's he got given. A, maybe he got a jawline but I not don't know. only the the truth is fit means something different to everybody mm -hmm. right like people are are you going by your mom and dad standard from the motherland or are you going talking about american standards in the in the bodybuilding gym are you talking about hollywood those are all like different thresholds right anyway i do think you probably should hire a personal trainer and you know what i realized that uh, you know how a lot of people are always like oh man personal training so expensive you don't need personal training forever when you sign up for it you're not like buying it in perpetuity forever you could get it for like two weeks a month <laughs> two months like as much as you need, yeah, right? Yeah, people think like you're signing a year long or like 10 year contract, bro. You could hire a personal trainer for like a month. It's totally worth it. You'd learn a lot from them too. Yeah, and you could even hire a personal trainer for like sports that you like. Yeah. Like I, it's nothing wrong. You can hire a personal basketball trainer for like a month and he'll teach you stuff about your game that you never ever would have picked up even exactly. if you're training with three friends. Um, another thing that he should look into is therapy. Oh. No, here's the thing. Diff you need different therapists for different issues. Mm -hmm. He may have some sort of masculine frame issue in his social life, not even his career life or his potentially his STEM career. STEM consultant career is not, you don't need to be hyper-masculine for that anyway, mm -hmm. necessarily. So I'm saying if he needs that, he should maybe get a male therapist for that particular aspect. All right, normalizing mental health. Um, should he take a look at martial arts, Andrew? Uh, this was a common thing that got brought up in, in not just obviously this thread, but a lot of threads. Yes, I think uh, probably he's, I know he's considering BJJ. I don't think I have a particular martial arts I would point him to. I will say this though, that boxing gyms do feel different than other gyms because boxing is a Western thing. It's not an Asian centric martial arts. 
So I feel like it is even basically even more. Yeah, more like you're gonna hang really. out with more like Latino guys and American thinking guys at a boxing gym. I think that might be interesting for people. Of course, I value Muay Thai, MMA, uh, judo. You know, like BJJ gyms. I think those are cool too. But I'm just saying, for a cultural social aspect, I think boxing gyms do offer something a little bit different. I think you just gotta get in where you fit in. Like, find a martial art that you really relate to that you that you like, and it should be full of guys who like yeah. know how to do. Uh, things like it, cook or like change tires and, and stuff. And another like that. thing like, is, once you learn that martial arts to a good enough level, you can actually still teach like girls that you know. You know, a lot of girls don't know martial arts; they're like a zero out of ten. You can bring them up to speed to a two out of ten. You're teaching them something physical mm, that's also so, very cool. That shows you are masculine. So you're like a student, but then you can become a teacher to people whose level is lower than you. Yeah, be um, a teacher. Teach them something. Come off the bench for a rec league team, flag <laughs> football, soccer, basketball. So, Obviously, right. a lot of team sports, a lot of Asians, specifically from Chinese nerdy academic families. Obviously, you could be any type of Asian. I just happen to see this archetype more prevalent on a probability ratio basis in the Chinese American community. Your parents may have put you in badminton or uh, swimming only growing up. So you have been isolated from Western team sports, right? And you need the exposure in Western team sports to what? To f be around other masculine guys? I mean that, but I think teamwork, um, relying on each other, getting mad at each other, getting frustrated with each other, making adjustments, cheering for each other. When I say join a rec team, what I actually mean is even if you're not good at the sport, just be on the team and like, be what it's like to be part of winning and losing together with guys. Right, you're saying even whether or not you're even contributing. Yeah, no, you're contributing. Contribute, find a way to contribute by like cheering on your teammates or like, or, or, or hyping them up or something like just getting involved. I think a lot of guys like they don't like um, yell enough and like cheer other people on. They're not loud enough. They don't just, they don't use their vocal cords and like say something positive enough. Um, do people need to do the archetypical buff guy things like get tattoos and be, you know, get a pit bull or get like, you know what I mean? Some type of like, you know, obviously having a pit bull dog and, and I'm not saying that that's the extreme 10 out of 10 version is a very hyper masculine thing to do. Ah, uh, okay. I, I don't know about the dog. I, I get a like, French. Yeah. At least the dog with some muscle, right? Whatever about the dog. I think the dog having a pet like teaches you responsibility and stuff like that. Uh, but Looking into getting a tattoo, bro, David, here's my thing. Listen, we all, we all Asian guys. If you don't have a lot of facial hair, you're not very tall. You don't have a lot of like structure on your face or whatever. Like you don't have an interesting look. How do you make up for that? How do you look interesting to people? How do you look masculine? How do you look uh, like you have an edge? A lot of people get a tattoo. A lot of people get a visible tattoo. It's not wrong. I right, don't think right, it's wrong. right. You're talking about like below below the elbow. Below the arm, on the arm, whatever, on your calf, whatever it is. Yep. So anyway, guys, I mean, obviously those were just some quick recommendations we had off the top of our head. I'm not sure. I, I'm assuming just based off this post, he's talking about conventional masculinity. Uh, anyway, let's just get into the comments section, Andrew. This guy said, it sounds like you have a friendly small guy personality. There's nothing really wrong with it. Um, it being authentic to yourself is better than better than trying to be alpha because that could just be annoying on the other end of the spectrum. Mm. What do you think of this comment? Because they're just saying, yeah, I mean, what? You have an enjoyable, small guy, agreeable personality, but you just, you want to be perceived as like this ultra crazy damn Bilzerian dude, but you're just not that. Yeah, that is true that he is just not that probably at a baseline and that's going to be very, very hard to change if possible, if impossible at all. Um, but I would say, let's say on the agreeable scale, he's here. And this is like a, a mass, a ultra masculine dude. Realistically, you can only tick from here to here. But he could do it. But You're talking about one to two standard Yeah, he just doesn't right? have to be as agreeable. Don't say yes to everything. Say you disagree with things. Say you want to lead stuff. You want to plan some things, you know? Yeah, and I also would say, and this is kind of like a little bit of an aside, is like be open to dating women from Asia. Like yeah. fuck girls, you know? Like that's like way different. I think that they are going to process things completely different because their motherboard was developed in the east versus girls that are developed in the west they may feel like this guy who's a tech consultant it's already like even if he has a good career and he makes his six figures it's like too boring for them yeah eric i am so glad you are such a reliable man and i look up to you it is so fun hanging out with you eric
This guy says, learn to be disagreeable. Um, many Asian men lean or are very people-pleasing because of a tough Asian upbringing. Some people said due to uh, Asian moms sheltering them and babying them and coddling them like a little uh, little emperor. A little prince. Learn to disagree and have differing opinions. Oh, but here's the thing about having different opinions. Make sure they're still well thought out. You should have passions, have opinions, and know how to disagree with people. Be like, oh, you know, actually, I, I, I think... I think there's another reason for that. Or like, right. oh, actually, I do. you could just say like, hey, actually, I disagree, but here's what I think. That's kind of cool. That's like saying, that's like showing like you're not afraid to disagree uh, yeah, with Especially people. when you're de disagreeing with your date, you got to be tactful about how you do it, right? Yeah, but you still got to show them you have passions. Not, oh, yeah, yeah, omakases. I love omakases. Oh, hiking, I love, oh, hiking's cool too. Right, oh, if you yeah. don't like hiking, don't go hiking. Yeah, but you can say it in a different way. Oh, oh I hate hiking, actually. And then That's you list why. off like 30 reasons exactly why you hate hiking. And then she's just like, oh, my swim. God, like, why do you hate hiking so much? Yeah, I just, I just never went. It's stupid. Hiking's stupid. Don't say that. Um, This guy said that he's 5'7 on a good day. He's not buff, um, but he's worked out with a lot of different chicks, even though girls tell him that he's girl-coded, a.k.a. feminine. Mm. So basically, he was like saying different lanes could work for different people. Yeah, man, I, I think you got to expose yourself to different types of people, man. Different types of people, all different types. Do you think of he's people. fishing in a limited pool? Probably. See, I don't know anything about him. This is the thing. Everybody's trying to give you advice, but you just wrote like two paragraphs. We don't know anything else. This is why people always give the advice to people to become bartenders. Like on their, like part time. Training. Like we're talking about like 10 it's good hours a week become a you, bartender. You know what like, we can do in this video, David? We can't actually give him solutions, uh, end result solutions. All we can do is give ideas for possible training, right? Being a bartender, going to a boxing gym, joining a co-ed sports team or right. joining uh, like this. You're exposing kind of yourself to a lot of reps outside of your comfort zone and outside of the current rings of, our, of Saturn yeah. that you're, Exposed yeah, to joining the, a co-ed improv class. Like these are not things that are going to solve your issue, but they're just pointing you in the right direction of training that you may need. Right, right, right. Um, ultimately, this guy said your problem isn't external, it's internal. You don't know yourself or what you ultimately want. Exactly. I don't think, I don't think this guy has a direction for himself. All right. So here's my takeaway. This guy, all I know is that he's a Chinese-American guy who's 30 years old and a tech consultant. He went to a good school. He has a, a upper middle class income or, you know, a, like a good income, but he's getting treated like a friendly, goofy, agreeable nerd. Because that's who he probably is acting like. Right, right, right. But the thing is, you have to understand, there's about 10 aspects of your life that would need to change on a consistent basis and need to have those social muscles or imaging or branding muscles like rebuilt from mm. the ground up, it could work, yeah. but it would take years and it would take a lot of concerted effort. But I, you know what I noticed about Reddit, Andrew, is a lot of people like they want things to change, but without really heavily changing themselves. Yeah, yeah. And I think uh, one of my last takeaways is like, if you need to change your environment to get some reps in to like, feel free to like talk to people and like become somebody you mean be, different. be outside of yourself or yeah, who yeah, you've always to, been, right? Not to be someone completely different, but like, let's say you go on a trip with a couple of your guy friends, right? Just to a different city even that where you don't know that many people, but you like, then you get to feel more free to like practice, you know, maybe be like, okay, maybe I'll act like a little bit more this way and I'll just see how it goes or something, you right. know? I'll joke with that uh, cute waitress or cute yeah. uh, service worker girl. That or I, I'll like, even joke with like, like I'm saying even like maybe the way he interacts with other guys too, that that changes how you interact with women too, right? Like I'll be extra friendly to this bartender, yeah. uh, guy or girl, you know, I'm just gonna make small chat and like I'll be able yeah. to, and, let and, me, no, let me try to make this person think I'm cool. Why right. don't you play that game? And obviously, you know, uh, to extrapolate it to the high level, it's passport broism, which I'm not even against, to be honest. I just think it's like right how reasons, you execute yeah. it. But like, I guess is the tough part that, that I, I got to ask, though, is the tough part that who he is not really appealing to what he, the goals he wants right now? Is that true? I'll say this. One thing to take a look at is Canada, too. In Canada, they're probably cooler with, like, a nice tech consultant guy. Like, that, that might not get knocked as many, like, uncool points in Canada. I agree. So, take a look at Europe, the EU, Western Europe. It just tends to be less... 
hyper masculine to be honest yeah. so yeah i mean those are all different suggestions what do you guys think in the comments section below i mean like we said a lot of reddit posts they're kind of very vague they don't provide enough information there's no photos but that's what people like about reddit is the uh anonymousness but also that's the disadvantage in terms of providing advice to these people let us know what you guys think in the comments section below what are ways that guys who are unhappy at 30 years old or whatever around that age range in terms of like, man, I, I got slotted in this lane and I kind of fulfill these stereotypes, but I don't want to be in this lane anymore. I want to shift over here. What are things they can realistically do? Let us know in the comment section below. Keep it civil until next time. We're the Hot Pot Boys. We out. Peace. Peace.